Video game culture is a worldwide new media subculture formed by video games. As computer and video games have exponentially increased in popularity over time, they have had a significant influence on popular culture. Video game culture has also evolved over time hand in hand with internet culture as well as the increasing popularity of mobile games. Many people who play video games identify as gamers, which can mean anything from someone who enjoys games to someone who is passionate about it. As video games become more social with multiplayer and online capability, gamers find themselves in growing social networks. Gaming can both be entertainment as well as competition, as a new trend known as electronic sports is becoming more widely accepted. Today, video games can be seen in social media, politics, television, film, music and YouTube. Topic. Demographics. As of 2016, the average age for a video game player is 35, a number slowly increasing as people who were children playing the first arcade, console and home computer games continue playing now on current systems. The gender distribution of gamers is reaching equilibrium, according to a 2016 study showing that 59% of gamers are male and 41% female. However, research has also shown that women are less likely to self identify as gamers out of fear of stigmatization. As of 2011, ESA reported that 71% of people aged 6 to 49 in the U.S. played video games, with 55% of gamers playing on their phones or mobile devices. The average age of players across the globe is mid to late 20s, and is increasing as older players grow in numbers. One possible reason for the increase in players could be attributed to the growing number of genres that require less of a specific audience. For example, the Wii console has widened its audience with games such as Wii Sports and Wii Fit. Both require more activity from the user and provide more reasons to play including family competition or exercise. It could also be because people who played video games when they were young are now growing older and still have that interest in video games. Currently, the largest entertainment industry for children is gaming. According to a 2008 telephone survey with a sample size of 1,102 respondents, 97% of children living in the United States and between the ages of 12 and 17 play video games. As displayed by the recent release of certain games, video game developers have started to create gaming content that appeals to alternative audiences, beyond those of Player One. The idea of Player One refers to the stereotypical straight male gamer as the sole individual that video games are created for. On the other hand, Player 2 may refer to populations of gamers who divert from this demographic, such as women or LGBTQ plus communities. Games designed to appeal to Player 2 offer gamers an alternative gaming experience, thus allowing for the further demographic expansion of the video game subculture. Topic. LAN gaming Video games are played in a variety of social ways, which often involve domestic gatherings or even in public places. A popular method of accomplishing this is a LAN local area network party, which if hosted at a home involves family and friends, creating a social event for people friendly with each other. LAN parties are often held in large-scale events conducted in public spaces and have a great number of participants who might not usually socialize. The EverQuest fan fairs for instance, provide weekends of socializing and playing, at a large gathering an event of several thousands of dedicated game fans. Terry Flew in his book Games, Technology, Industry, Culture also emphasizes the online gaming communities where players aren't physically located in the same space, but still socializing together. This raises the notion of McLuhan's global village, as people are able to transcend their physical limitations and communicate with people, possessing a similar interest, from all around the world. Shapiro also stresses the possibility of using technology to enhance one's social life, as friendships no longer have to be structured by physical proximity e.g. neighbors, colleagues. Shapiro states that the net online gaming communities gives individuals the opportunity to extend their social network in a novel way, to communicate and share life experiences with people regardless of where they live and form online relationships. Thus, such online communities satisfy a genuine need for affiliation with like-minded others. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Online gaming. Online gaming has drastically increased the scope and size of gaming culture. Online gaming grew out of games on bulletin board systems and on college mainframes from the 1970s and 1980s. MUDs offered multiplayer competition and cooperation but on a scope more geographically limited than on the Internet. The Internet allowed gamers from all over the world, not just within one country or state, to play games together with ease. With the advent of cloud gaming high-performance games can now be played from low-end client systems and even TVs. One of the most groundbreaking titles in the history of online gaming is Quake, which offered the ability to play with 16, and eventually up to 32 players simultaneously in a 3D world. Gamers quickly began to establish their own organized groups, called clans. Clans established their own identities, their own marketing, their own form of internal organization, and even their own looks. Some clans had friendly or hostile rivalries, and there were often clans who were allied with other clans. Clan interaction took place on both professionally set competition events, and during normal casual playing where several members of one clan would play on a public server. Clans would often do their recruiting this way, by noticing the best players on a particular server, they would send invitations for that player to either try out or accept membership in the clan. Gamers of all ages play online games, with the average age being 31 years old. Clan or guild-based play has since become an accepted and expected aspect of multiplayer gaming, with several games offering cash prize tournament-style competition to their players. Many clans and guilds also have active fan bases, which, when combined with the tournament aspect, contribute in turning clan-based gaming into a semi-professional sport. Clans also allow players to assist each other in simulated combat and quests in game advancement, as well as providing an online family for friendly socializing. From Quake, gaming grew beyond first person shooters and has impacted every genre. Real time strategy, racing games, card games, sports games can all be played online. Online gaming has spread from its initial computer roots to console gaming as well. Today, every major video game console available offers degrees of online gaming, some limited by particular titles, some even offer up entire virtual communities. Topic: Competition. Topic: Slang and terminology. As in other cultures, the community has developed a gamut of slang words or phrases that can be used for communication in or outside of games. Due to their growing online nature, modern video game slang overlaps heavily with internet slang, as well as leetspeak, with many words such pwn, as well as noob, being direct carryovers from leetspeak. There are terms to describe gaming events, games genres, gamer demographics, strategies, specific events, situations, and more. It is especially common among online games to encourage the use of neologisms for convenience in communication. While most games have specific terms that the dedicated player bases use, some of the most prevalent phrases across all communities include abbreviations such as LOL, meaning laughing out loud, as well as noob, which is a derogatory term for a new or unskillful player. Another popular term that stemmed from the gaming community is the abbreviation. AFK, meaning away from keyboard, to refer to people who are not at the computer or paying attention. Another common abbreviations include GLHF, which stands for good luck, have fun, which is often said at the beginning of a match to show good sportsmanship. Likewise, at the end of a game, GG or GGWP may be said to congratulate the opponent, win or loss, on a Good game, well played. While much of gaming lingo uses abbreviations for convenience, a lot of jargon is used for cyberbullying. In cases of online games with text or voice chat channels, it is not uncommon for players to blame or insult one another using such jargon. Some additional examples of slang and terminology include wrecked. Slang for wrecked is often used to point out the obvious when a player or entity is destroyed. Less commonly, own. Ownage, owned, or PWNED is used in a similar fashion. Topic: <laughs> Gaming networks. 
The shift from console-based or shrink wrap gaming to online games has allowed online games and massively multiplayer online gaming today to develop highly advanced and comprehensive communication networks. With the freedom of the Internet's architecture, users can become producers of the technology and shapers of the growing networks. Compared to past eras where consumers had little means of communication with game developers and other communities beyond their geographical location, the Internet has created many methods of communication such as through the online bulletin board website, Reddit. Gamers can often develop sub-communities in game clans and may use third-party VoIP programs to communicate while playing games such as Skype, Ventrilo, TeamSpeak or Discord. These gaming communities may have nothing in common, or instead designed for dedicated, skilled players, or even clans made for those with shared commonalities such as personality, ethnicity, heritage, language or gender. Another key component of many gaming networks is the connection between the player base and the game developers. Many game developers have outlets either through official website forums or social media where gamers can communicate with and provide feedback to the game developers. Likewise, these same places become key locations for game developers to communicate with their fans, where often dedicated employees act as liaisons as a bridge between the company and the community. Some of the most advanced networks take place with massively multiplayer online gaming where servers of tens of thousands can be present simultaneously in the same instance or environment. In major titles such as World of Warcraft and Dota 2, the player base is in the millions. With so many people, many of these communities may develop virtual economies that may use a barter system or currency system. In some games, the interest in the virtual economies may be so great players will spend real money through auction sites like eBay for virtual property and items, commonly known as RMT real market trading. Some game developers may ban RMT in their games, especially when it interferes with the equity of the game. That being said, other game developers embrace it with one game, Second Life, with its entire focus on the usage of real-life currency for everything in the game world. Since smartphones became commonplace around 2007, mobile gaming has seen rapid increases in popularity. The widespread appeal of simple, time-killing games, reminiscent of social games, such as those found on Facebook, has set the stage for mobile gaming to account for almost 35% of gaming's total market share by 2017. Because games such as Clash of Clans offer in-game bonuses for referring new players to the game, mobile gamers have turned to social media sites to recruit their friends and family. Some games even offer integrated social media support to provide players with in-game chat or friends features for communicating and competing with other players. The large number of mobile game players has led to the creation of devoted forums, blogs, and tip sites similar to those committed to console gaming. Popular gaming publications, like Ars Technica and Touch Arcade are even beginning to give significant coverage to mobile games. <laughs> Social or anti-social technology There has been much debate among media theorists as to whether video gaming is an inherently social or anti-social activity. Terry Flew argues that digital games are increasingly social, a trend that works against the mainstream media's portrayal of players as isolated, usually adolescent boys hidden away in darkened bedrooms, failing to engage with the social world. He asserts that games are played in very social and public settings, for example computers and consoles are often played in living areas of domestic homes, where people play with family or friends. David Marshall argues against the rich source of effects based research, finding that games are deliberating and anti-social forms of behavior, rather suggesting that the reality of most games is that they are dynamically social, the elaborate social conversations that emerge from playing games online in massive multiplayer formats. MMOG. Exemplifying The Sims Online, he states has built up entire political and social structures in given communities that provide an elaborate game life for participants." Gamers in these online worlds participate in many-to-many -many forms of communication and one-to-one -one correspondence. The games are not only massive, they are also "...intimate and social." Gosney argues that alternate reality gaming is also inherently social, drawing upon Pierre Levy's Levy 1998 notion of collective intelligence. 
He states that the game relied upon an unprecedented level of corroboration and collective intelligence to solve the game. The issue of collective and corroborative team play is essential to ARG, thus are anything but a solitary activity. Hans Jesser further rejects the mainstream media view that video gaming is an anti-social activity, asserting, there is considerable empirical evidence that Second Life serves mainly to widen the life experience of individuals who have already a rich first life, not as a compensating device for marginal loners, thus highlighting the fantastic social possibilities of Second Life, as the intangible reward of social belongingness is of paramount importance. Bray and Konsinski also argue the ability of the technology to enrich their lives. As most millennials report, no difference between friendships developed in the real world versus friendships developed online, and most use the Internet to maintain their social networks and plan their social activities. <laughs> <laughs> social implications of video games The advent of video games gave an innovative media technology, that allowed consumers to archive, annotate, appropriate and recirculate media content. Consumers can use this media source as an alternative tool to gain access to information of their interest. The community aspect to videogaming has also had implications for the social interactions and collective behaviors of consumers involved in the activity. Rise of subcultures Contemporary investigations have found that there is a prevailing social framework in place during gatherings of gaming enthusiasts or gamers. Myra 2008, p. 25, suggests that gamers who gather together to play possess a shared language, engage in collective rituals and are often interested in cultural artifacts such as gaming paraphernalia. Cronin and McCarthy 2011 have also explored a liminal, hedonic food culture to be present among these socially connected actors. The commensal consumption of energy-dense low-nutrient foods is considered to be appropriated during long stretches of gameplay to contribute to the community and hedonistic aspects of social gaming. In response to the central importance that food plays in the collective enjoyment of social gaming, various websites have been created which allow gamers to rate their favorite foods to accompany play. The presence of rituals, shared discourse, collective action, and even a liminal food culture among gaming communities gives credence to the concept of these cohorts existing as self defining sub units within mainstream culture. However, due to the ephemeral and transient nature of their rituals, and also the possibility of virtual interaction through online participation, these cohorts should be considered postmodern subcultures. Gaming communities have social elements beyond physical interaction and have come to a stage where online and offline spaces can be seen as merged rather than separate. Topic: <laughs> MMORPG and identity tourism. Terry Flew 2005 p. 264 suggests that the appeal of the massively multiplayer online role-playing game lie in the idea of escapism, and the ability to assume the role of someone or something that is a fantasy in real life. He notes that Dot for some women, they enjoy adopting what they feel to be an image of femininity more acceptable or desirable than their real-world body. This is what he calls identity tourism. A form of hopping from one person to another, for which there usually is a stereotypical discourse associated with the protagonist. This is seen in the case of males who assume the personas of the female gender, and the character's representation of her gender being overly sexualized and or passive. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 this tends to perpetuate and accentuate existing stereotypes of women. Nakamura. Topic. Ownership Ownership of video game entities is a major issue in video game culture. On one side, players, especially who played with avatars for several years, have treated the avatars as their own property. On the other hand, publishers claim ownership of all in-game items and characters through the EULA end-user license agreements. Terry Flew recognized this problem. 
Intellectual property is much better suited to conventional texts that are fixed or finished, rather than ongoing collaborative creations like games. He also highlights that these issues will only worsen, as more interactive games emerging, issues of regulation, ownership, and service will only get more problematic. <laughs> Violence narrative Violent content in video game are often a source of criticism, which according to Terry Flew is related to the subject of moral panic. Terry Flew writes that the effects-based research which gives rise to the computer games cause violence discourse is mostly psychology-based research, influenced particularly after horrific events such as the shooting of schoolchildren at Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado in 1999. He says that the assumption behind such research, cause-effect behaviorist models of communication, is a flawed one. Several studies show a correlation between violent content conveyed through media including video games and violent or aggressive behavior, while others 2004 consider that the evidence for such conclusions is thin and highly contestable. Fox News reported that Montreal shooting case in Canada was carried out by the criminal Kimvir Gill, who is a player of Super Columbine Massacre, whose narrative attaches with strong violence sense. On the other hand, some people who hold social determinism theory assert technology is neutral, but it is the way that humans manipulate technology which brings about its social impact. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Issues of gender and sexuality. In conjunction with the changing demographics of video game creators and players, issues related to women and video games, including sexism in video gaming and gender representation in video games, have received increased attention by academia, the media, the games industry and by gamers themselves. The Gamergate controversy of 2014, which involves issues of sexism, misogyny, and journalistic ethics, is an example of this. Benjamin Pine has argued that because video game culture has long been a space dominated by heterosexual men, the video game industry tends to cater to this particularly lucrative audience, producing video games that reflect the desires of the heterosexual male gaze. He further argues that this lack of representation of alternate identities in video games has caused gamers who divert from the dominant demographic are often relegated to the margins of the culture. This process is thus seen perpetuates the stereotypical image of the geeky, heterosexual male gamer as the ruler of the gaming world. Contrarily to popular belief, there are a multitude of communities within video game culture that do not fulfill the typical gamer stereotype. The problem is that they lack visibility. One reason for this is that many people do not want to reveal their association with gaming culture out of fear of stigmatization. Past research has shown this to be the case for the female gamer. Because women in gaming are often ostracized by their male gamer counterparts, the female gamer are frequently forced to conceal their genders, only participating in gaming when they have the ability to remain anonymous. When concealing their identities, females gamers try to change their voice when talking online, they will play as a male character instead of a female character followed by some kind of masculine name. Doing this however, can make video games less fun and exciting and could cause the player just quit the game. On the other hand, it's different for the male gamer. Like girl gamers would choose a male character to play as, the male gamer would sometimes choose a girl character to play as. But for the male to pick a a girl character is very common in the culture. According to Bassan, Pruitt Frilino, and Taylor, male gamers who try to be female characters are not harassed as much as girl gamers since the male gamers can simply undo the change or just reveal their true identities as a male, which reduces the harassing. When it comes to actually working into the gaming industries, there is a small minority of women within these industries. With 3% of programmers, 11% game designers, 13% of artists and animators, 13% of QA testers, and 16% of producers, these are low numbers for women in the gaming industry. The reason for this is the lack of encouragement due to the negativity or harassing of females in the gaming culture. Due to being the minority, women in the gaming industry receive stereotypical threats because of being in a male-dominant career. There was a hashtag that was created on Twitter that was number one reason we in which it was reasons why there were a lack of women in the video game industry. Video game designer Kim Swift stated that, Because I get mistaken for the receptionist or day hire marketing at trade shows. 
Additionally, dominant perceptions of gamers as asocial, straight, white men are also challenged by the presence of gamers who do not identify as heterosexual. For instance, it has been shown by past research that the LGBTQ community maintains a notable presence within video game culture. For LGBTQ gamers, video games provide an alternate reality in which there is the opportunity for sexual expression, identity formation, and community building. Such communities indicate the development of diverse subcultures within the culture of gaming as a whole. Topic: <laughs> Gaming and popular culture. Games are also advertised on different TV channels depending on the age demographic they're targeting. Games targeted toward kids and young teenagers are advertised on Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, while games targeted toward older teenagers and adults are advertised on MTV, G4, Comedy Central and in NFL Network. <laughs> Gaming is portrayed by the media From the 1970s through even the 1990s, video game playing was mostly seen as subculture hobby activity and as a substitute for physical sports. However, in its early history video gaming had occasionally caught the attention of the mainstream news outlets. In 1972, Pong became the first video game pop culture phenomenon. This was followed by Pac-Man in 1980. Other video games labeled as pop culture phenomena include Final Fantasy, Halo, Metal Gear, The Legend of Zelda, Tomb Raider, Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Pokémon, Guitar Hero, Sonic the Hedgehog, and the Mario games. As games became more realistic, issues of questionable content arose. The most notable early example is NARC, which through its use of digitized graphics and sound and its adult-oriented theme quickly became a target of the press. These same issues arose again when Mortal Kombat debuted, particularly with its home video game console release on the Genesis and Super NES platforms. Due to Nintendo's strict content control guidelines, that system's version of Mortal Kombat was substantially reworked to remove any extreme violence. In response to these issues and in parallel to similar demands made upon the music and movie industries, the ESRB was established to help guide parents in their purchasing decisions. 1993's Doom caused quite a stir, with its detailed 3D graphics and copious amounts of blood and gore. The 1996 game, Duke Nukem 3D, was accused of promoting pornography and violence. As a result of the criticism, censored versions of the game were released in certain countries. In the 1999 Columbine shootings, violent video games were for a time directly blamed by some for the incident, and labeled as murder simulators. In 2001, Grand Theft Auto 3 was released, which started the controversy over again. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Television channels. The first video game TV show was GamePro TV. The first television channel dedicated to video gaming and culture, G4, was launched in 2002. However, over the years, the channel has moved away from video game shows, and more towards male-oriented programs. X-Play, one of the channel's most popular shows and the highest-rated video game review show, is still produced at G4 until it was bought by Esquire magazine, who decided to cease X-Play and focus less on the video game-oriented audience of G4 and go with their traditional, more general male audience of their magazine. Ginks TV is an international multi-language gaming television channel, managed by the former MTV Network's Europe managing director Mikhail Bakker. There are also video game shows that appear on other channels, such as Spike TV, Fuel TV and MTV. In Korea, there are two cable TV channels fully dedicated to video games, OnGameNet and MBC Game, broadcasting professional game leagues that are held in Korea. In Germany most of the shows and channels dedicated to gaming were cancelled, although the content was highly appreciated by the gaming audience. There was one digital cable and satellite channel with focus on video games, which was closed in 2009, Giga Television. Some of the hosts also did their own show game one dedicated to games on the German MTV channel until cancelled 2014. The show is quite famous for their sketches on games and gaming culture in Germany. 
The unofficial successor is the YouTube show Game 2, financed by public service broadcasting program Funk and produced by the 24-7 online channel Rocket Beans TV, which is dedicated to gaming, nerd and pop culture. A similar show was Reload. Produced for the public service channel Einsplus, until the channel was announced to close in 2014. The Franco-German TV network Arte has a show dedicated to gaming culture, Art of Gaming. In Australia, there is one TV show that is based on gaming and games. Good Game on the ABC Australian Broadcasting Corporation which broadcasts on channel ABC2. The show is also available as a podcast on iTunes. In Russia, there are one satellite, the Pervy Igrovoy, Gaming First, and one cable, Gameplay TV, Gaming TV channels. Channels have internet streams. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Internet shows. AVGN is a show about a fictional character created by James Rolfe. The character is portrayed as a foul-mouthed, short-tempered retro gamer who reviews old video games usually in a sarcastic and negative manner with frequent use of profanity for comical effect. Pure PWNAGE, was a fictional series chronicling the life and adventures of Jeremy, a self-proclaimed pro-gamer. Red vs. Blue made by Rooster Teeth, is a machinima machine cinema filmed with many different video games. The series consists of hundreds of short episodes with characters acting out comedic sections of their lives in their own video game universes. Consolvania, a game review, sketch show produced in Glasgow, Scotland, was developed into a broadcast series, Videogaden on BBC Scotland. Button Mashers, an original gaming news show for website GameZombie.tv, was shot at a $1 million HDTV studio and has millions of viewers all across the internet. The Guild is a web series, created by Felicia Day, in which the cast are members of a guild that plays an MMORPG similar to World of Warcraft. Game Grumps, a show on YouTube in which the cast plays games sent in by viewers. It has a related show called Steam Train where the cast plays games either on Steam or sent in by independent developers. Topic influences on music Video game music has been utilized by popular musicians in many ways. The earliest example was the electronic music band Yellow Magic Orchestra's self-titled album, released in 1978, which utilized Space Invaders samples as instrumentation. In turn, the band would have a major influence on much of the video game music produced during the 8-bit and 16-bit eras. During the golden age of arcade video games in the early 1980s, it became common for arcade game sounds and bleeps to be utilized, particularly in early hip-hop music, synth-pop, and electro music. Buckner and Garcia's Pac-Man Fever, released in 1982, featured songs that were both about famous arcade games like Pac-Man, Donkey Kong and Berserk, and also used the sound samples from the games themselves as instrumentation. In 1984, former Yellow Magic Orchestra member Harry Hosono produced an album entirely from Namco arcade game samples, entitled Video Game Music, Affix Twin, an experimental electronic artist, under the name Powerpill, released the Pac-Man EP in 1992 that featured a heavy use of Pac-Man sound effects. An entire music genre called chiptunes, or sometimes GameWave, have artists dedicated to using the synthesizer sets that came with past video game consoles and computers, particularly the Commodore 64 and the Nintendo Entertainment System. These bands include Mr. Pac-Man, 8-Bit Weapon, Goto 80, 50 Hz and Puss. The influence of retro video games on contemporary music can also be seen in the work of less purist bit -pop artists, such as Solemn Camel Crew and Anna Managuchi. Moreover, many gamers collect and listen to video game music, ripped from the games themselves. This music is known by its file extension and includes such formats as, SID Commodore 64, NSF NES, and SPC SNES. Cover bands like Minibosses perform their own instrumentations, and groups like the Protoman have written rock operas inspired by the Mega Man video games, while communities like Overclocked Remix have released thousands of game music arrangements in a variety of genres and have influenced the careers of several game composers. A comedy subgenre has developed increasing the popularity of several musicians including Jonathan Colton, famous for the song Still Alive featured in the credits of Valve Software's Portal, and Jonathan Lewis, songwriter and composer 
are credited with the Half-Life themed parody album Combine Road. Full orchestras, such as the Symphonic Game Music Concert Tour North America, the United States, and Asia performing symphonic versions of video game songs, particularly the Final Fantasy series, the Metal Gear series, and Nintendo-themed music, such as the Mario and Zelda Big Band Live Concert. In Japan, Dragon Quest symphonic concerts are performed yearly, ever since their debut in 1987. Video game and film crossovers Films based on video games As video games often have settings, characters, and plots, they have often become the basis for Hollywood movies. The first movie based upon a video game was consistently denounced by critics. It was 1993's Super Mario Bros., which featured John Leguizamo and Dennis Hopper. Most film adaptions of other video games have been rated unfavorably as well, and the adaptions often fail at the box office too. 2001's Lara Croft, Tomb Raider was successful at the box office, despite poor reviews $274,703,340 USD gross revenue. Director Uwe Boll has become well known for his film adaptions of video games, notorious for being poorly reviewed box office flops. This was the case with Blood Rain, which was reviewed terribly by critics and only grossed $3,650,275 USD, a fraction of its $25 million budget. The contributing factors to the unsuccessful transition from home television to theater screens are attributed to, a dramatic re-envisioning of the video game that provides a disconnect from the game's plot, the game itself lacking a plot rich enough to provide a decent script particularly with versus fighting games, a substantially altered plot to make the movie more mainstream, doom, and an emphasis on using celebrity actors over actors that would fit the part. Examples, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Blood Rain, Doom, House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed, Film. Topic. Movies about video games Hollywood has also created films that are about video games themselves. In the 1982 film Wargames, a computer mistakes a fictional computer game called Global Thermonuclear War for reality. Also in 1982, Tron featured a programmer who was transported into a computer and had to directly take part in the games he had created. In the 1984 film, The Last Starfighter, a stand-up arcade video game is used as a test to find those with the gift who are recruited to pilot actual starfighter spacecraft in the conflict between the Ryland Star League and the Kodan Empire, 1989's The Wizard, starring Fred Savage as the first film about a real video game. The plot revolves around about adolescents who compete at games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The film was also a first look at the mega-hit Super Mario Bros. 3. The main character from 2006's Grandma's Boy was a game tester who developed his own game on the side. The film made multiple references to video game culture and featured the game Demonic, which was cancelled by its publisher shortly after the film's release. The most current example of a film of this type is 2006's Stay Alive, a horror film about a next-generation video game that is so realistic that it kills its players in the same way their avatars were killed. Released in 2012, Wreck-It Ralph is also about the gaming world inside an arcade. Topic. Interactive movies Interactive movies as a computer and video game genre was the result of the multimedia expansion of computers and video game consoles in the mid-1990s, primarily because of the increased capacity offered by the Laserdisc format. Interactive movies started out on arcade machines in 1983, but quickly expanded to computers and video game consoles such as the Sega CD, the Philips CDI and the 3DO Interactive Multiplayer. The games are characterized by more emphasis on cinematic sequences, using full motion video and voice acting. Interactive movie games have been made in a number of genres, including adventure games, rail shooters, and role-playing games.
The first interactive movie game was Dragon's Lair, originally released in the arcades in 1983, making it the first game to use a laserdisc and animation by Don Bluth, a man who worked for Disney on features like Robin Hood, The Rescuers, and Pete's Dragon, but later worked for other film companies like United Artists All Dogs Go to Heaven and Universal Studios The Land Before Time. In Dragon's Lair, you control the actions of a daring knight named Dirk, to save a princess from an evil dragon, hence the name of the game. Since the dawn of this exact game, more and more companies were influenced by the technology used, and decided to make their own interactive movie games for arcades and consoles. The birth of the interactive movie genre was studded with unimpressive flops, though the genre later came into its own. At the time, video capture technology was still in its infancy, with short and often grainy and low quality video segments being the norm for games of any length. Topic: <laughs> Video game and traditional media forms. With the rapid convergence of all media types into a digital form, video games are also beginning to affect, and be affected by traditional media forms. In the history, the television engineer Ralph Baer, who conceived the idea of an interactive television while building a television set from scratch created the first video game. Video games are now also being exploited by pay TV companies which allow you to simply attach your computer or console to the television cable system and you can simply download the latest game. Games act in television, with the player choosing to enter the artificial world. The constructed meanings in video games are more influential than those of traditional media forms. The reason is that games interact with the audience in a dialogue of emotion, action, and reaction. The interactivity means this occurs to a depth that is not possible in the traditional media forms. Computer games have developed in parallel to both the video game and the arcade video game. The personal computer and console machines such as the Dreamcast, Nintendo GameCube, PlayStation 2 and Xbox offered a new dimension to game playing. The consoles have now largely been replaced by the Xbox 360, Wii and, the PlayStation 4, and the personal computer is still a leading gaming machine. Games are the first new computer-based media form to socialize a generation of youth in a way that traditional media forms have in the past. Therefore, the MTV generation has been overtaken by the Nintendo generation, however, some refer to the current generation as the iPod generation. Because they straddle the technologies of television and computers, electronic games are a channel through which we can investigate the various impacts of new media and the technologies of convergence. Interactive engagement between players and digital games Digital game is a new form of media where users interact and highly and gauge with. Terry Flew said that unlike lean back types of media such as television, film and books, digital games place users into a productive relationship. In other words, a player has a relationship where he or she serves to create their own text every time when engaged. Digital games are normally lacking in narrative. Rather than focusing on its character development or plot, usually, the setting is the important aspect of the narrative. For example, despite the fact that games such as Tetris and Pong lack a plot or characters, that manage to keep players engaged for hours, furthermore, digital games place players into a position where they have power to control. Players have power because they are the actor in the game. Again, Flu wrote that, The engagement comes because the player is the performer, and the game evaluates the performance and adapts to it. Emergent games are becoming a popular type of video games as they offer environments and sets of rules where players' story can branch in various unexpected directions, depending on the player's own decisions. Players as users of these new forms of media, not only ingest narrative but also can more freely interact and engage in ways where they can actually create their own text. 2005, the time spent playing games varies by age group and by country, with estimates putting the average between 6 and 22 hours per week. <laughs> See also